show you how to make this jack-o'-lantern in spline. It's 3D, has a subtle glowing effect inside of it, and it follows your cursor. So it's pretty easy to do, and I'll walk through each of the steps. So start in a blank document and delete the default plane. I'm gonna hide the helper for this light just to get it out of the way. And I'm gonna change the background color so it's a little easier to see what we're working on. It's like a nice light blue here. I'm gonna start with a sphere shape. So I'm gonna hold down Option and Shift to scale up from the middle. Put it right there. And I'm gonna view the wireframe so I can see how complex the mesh is. I'm gonna turn this down so it's a little easier to edit. So I'm gonna make the vertical sides 24, horizontal sides is gonna be more like 10. And I think that is gonna be plenty of geometry to work with. From here, we're gonna go smooth and edit. And I'll turn the wireframe back off so we can see the shape here. I'm gonna use the edge select tool. And if you double click on an edge, it's gonna select the whole thing. So what I'm gonna do here is hold down shift and select every other line like this. And we're gonna modify these to make the pumpkin shape. There we go. I'll view it from the top so you can see what's happening. With either of these modifiers here, the circle ones, you can scale. And if you just move it on its own, it's gonna kind of collapse in this way. But if you hold shift, it's gonna go in all directions. And you just wanna get a subtle movement like that to give that a little bit of a pumpkin shape. It's looking pretty cool. I'm gonna grab the vertices at the top, but first I wanna make sure that my selection is set to front so I don't accidentally select the points at the bottom. So we select these. Make sure you get all of them. And I'm gonna drag them down a little bit just to flatten it out. It's looking good. I'll do the same on the bottom. That one. Drag them up. You know, I missed one over here. I'll just drag that uh, a little closer into place. Okay, that's gonna be good. We're gonna exit out of this edit mode and view it from the front. And I think the pumpkin looks a little nicer if it's a little bit wider. So I'm just gonna grab this modifier here and kind of flatten it out a little bit. All right, I think that looks like a great pumpkin shape. So next I'm gonna add the stem to the top. View the top a little bit. I'm gonna start with a simple cube here. This tells me I'm gonna place it right on top. I'm gonna hold down Option and Shift just so I get a really simple cube right in the middle there and view it from the top just to make sure it is in place. And move it here. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Holding down shift while I do this so it scales in all directions. And I'm gonna hide the pumpkin for just a moment so I can make this stem shape. So I'm going to smooth and edit. I'm going to grab the extrude tool, pull out the front, the top portion, rotate it, slide it over a little bit, and blow one more and another rotation and a little bit of movement get a nice curve there and i'll grab this bottom plane and i'm going to scale it out as well again holding shift to make it scale in all directions i'm going to add one loop cut here just to control the shape a little bit more i want to scale that part again a little bit more okay i think that's looking good so i'll turn my pumpkin back on and put it down in place Okay, I think that looks great. Now I'm gonna add my materials. So on the sphere, I'm gonna name my layer so I know what's what. This will be the pumpkin. This is the stem. All right, pumpkin, I'm gonna change it from a flat color to depth. And it's gonna view it from the top here. We'll be able to see, I'll hide the stem for a moment here. This is like a 3D gradient. So if I edit the gradient itself, you can see you can actually move it around and you can kind of see what it's doing. So what I want to do is adjust the spacing of these first and then change the colors because I want these outer portions of the pumpkin to be a, a lighter orange and these inner grooves to be a darker color to give it a little bit of interesting coloring and dimension. So I think that placement looks good. I'm going to change this white color to be the darker color. So I'll go to a darker orange here, more brownish. Then I'll change this black color to be a bit more of a yellowish orangish on the outside of the pumpkin and i'm going to change my lighting here too i think this lighting looks a little bit better when you change it to overlay that uh, looks nice and i might change this to from fong to lambert as well i think that looks good i don't need those intense highlights there okay i like the way that is looking so let's view it from the front again that looks really nice okay i'm going to turn my stem back on this one i don't need to do the depth i'm just going to do a simple solid green color 
but I will change that lighting mode again to overlay and we'll change it to Lambert. It's not quite so shiny. And I might shrink this up just a little bit now that I'm looking at it. Okay. All right, we've got the basic pumpkin shape. Next, what we're gonna do is use a Boolean modifiers to create the jack lantern cutouts. And then we'll use another depth color to add the glow effect to the inside of the pumpkin. So first, I'm gonna start by drawing a square right on the face of the shape here. And I'm gonna go into the edit mode for this shape. I'm gonna select a point and delete it. And I'm gonna grab this corner and drag it over just to make it kind of an even triangle here. So I'm gonna close out of edit mode for here. I'm gonna place this right where I want this eye to go and kind of rotate to the side so that we can see the extrusion we'll add. And this is gonna help actually create that cutout. So once you extrude it, you can kind of set it into the pumpkin shape and that's gonna determine how how deep into the shape it goes. If I select both of those, I'm gonna use a Boolean modifier. I'm gonna check this first option here and you'll see that that cuts the shape out of the pumpkin. And that looks pretty great already. And it's created, giving us a group here, a Boolean group. So instead of rectangle, I'm gonna name that I, and I'm actually going to duplicate it and just drag over a second one. You know what, instead of doing that, I'm just gonna drag this one so it goes straight over and place it right about there. And while I'm here, I'm gonna give it one more duplication and this time I'm gonna make it the nose and I'll make it smaller as well. Sometimes when you shrink it, you have to adjust its position to make sure that it's cutting through properly. So let me click off of there. I think we're from the front. It's pretty good. I might move this nose over a little bit here. That would have been this one. Nose. So I can place it right in the middle here. Okay. And now for the mouth, I'm going to draw that shape with the pen tool. So I'll start with a shape right here in the middle of the mouth. I'm going to get the outer corner here, the bottom of the middle of the mouth, and the other corner up here. And then I'm going to come back in and modify these shapes. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to hold down option on Mac. I think it's Alt on a PC to modify this curve handle, break some apart so it's not a straight curve. Let's make it into a corner. It's going to be the same as any vector editing software. Okay, that looks good. And I think what this has done is actually place my shape yeah, right in the middle of the pumpkin here. So I'm gonna exit out of the edit mode so I can pull this forward and we should see yep, a simple gray shape here. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add the extrusion. It's gonna pull it up as far as I can. And what I'll do here is place it into the pumpkin where I want it to go and just add it right into the Boolean group. And you'll see that does the same cutout as the other shapes. So this is looking really great already. Now, one thing I can do here is add some additional complexity to these shapes because they're pretty basic right now. So what I might do with this mouth is give it some teeth. So we first rename this mouth and I'm going to come back into the edit mode for this one. It's going to show me the path that I drew. If I do it straight from the front, that'll yeah, make it nice and clear where the lines are. I'm going to use the pen tool and I'm going to add some points to it. So I think I'm going to make a tooth up here on this part of the mouth. I'm going to make three points along this curve and grab my arrow tool and I'll pull down this middle one to give me kind of a nice pointy tooth. And I will do the same thing. You're not seeing the Boolean update yet. We have to modify just a little bit to get it to update, but it's gonna work in just a moment here. Do the same thing, I'm gonna add another tooth on this side, right about here. Pull that one up to get a nice tooth shape. I think that's gonna look nice and strange. Um, okay, good. So then what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit more extrusion to it. I think you just sometimes have to make a little bit of a change to the extrusion to get it to show up. But there it is. We've got the teeth poking into the mouth there. That looks great. I'm going to do something similar with the eyes. Um, I really like having sort of a pupil in the eye on the pumpkin. So uh, I'll again view it from the front, hit edit. I'm going to use the pen tool here. Do a very similar method. Except that when I drag this middle one up, you'll see it's going to start out as just a point. But we can use this curve tool here to kind of pull this out and give it a nice rounded look. Go. I'll just edit these handles to make it nice and rounded here. Good. And then I'll do the same thing. I'm going to add a little bit more extrusion to get that to pop through. That looks good. Yeah, that's great. And then um, instead of just doing that to the other eye, I will uh, delete that one and copy this one over again. So I'm going to hit duplicate and drag it over to right about here. Now I'm going to name the eye so I know which ones are. So this will be the pumpkin's right eye, I R, and then this one will be the left eye. Okay, that's looking good. Now what I want to do is on my Boolean shape, this is where I'm going to want to add 
the glowing light effect from on the inside of the pumpkin. So it's got the depth that kind of transferred over from the original pumpkin shape before we created the Boolean. So that's great. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to actually uh, add another depth layer on top of it. So adding a new layer, changing it from color to depth. I'm going to make sure it's below my lighting, but above my other co pumpkin color. And here, you can actually even start to see a little bit of the glow happening. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to exaggerate it. And so what I want to do is bring this in a little bit to the middle. I'm going to make another one here, except this one I'm going to change to 0% opacity so that it's going to preserve the outer color of the pumpkin. And instead, it's going to give us just the colors on the inside. And we'll be able to control how far they show. So instead of this one being black, though, I want to make it sort of a glowing yellowish color. And you can start to see it in there, but what we're going to do is adjust these handles so that it shows through even more. And I just want to make sure that I don't get to the point where yeah, where we're seeing it kind of bleed through the bottom of the pumpkin there. So that's where I'm going to bring that back in. And what I can do is if I want, because it's a 3D gradient, I can actually drag it forward in the pumpkin. So we'll see it coming through in the face shapes a little bit more uh, and less so in the top and bottom of the pumpkin, which is nice. Uh, and with that, I might drag this down a little bit here. So we've got this really nice glow happening. And maybe I can make that even more of a nice kind of subtle transition from the glow to the non-glowing areas. That looks really good. So we'll view this again from the front. Good, let's just get a preview of how this looks. Good, I might add another layer of subdivision to this so the pumpkin's not so sharp on these parts. To do that, I'm gonna go back to the pumpkin shape. I'm gonna add another level of subdivision to it. Gives it a little, rounds it out a little bit more on the pumpkin portion itself. That looks really nice. Okay, and now this looks great, um, but we can actually animate this glow on the inside a little bit and make it look a little bit more like a glowing candle. So to do that, we'll go back to the Boolean and we're gonna add a state to it. So on the new state, we're just gonna edit the settings of that new depth layer that we created. And I think it'll be nice for this to actually look like it kind of fades back a little bit here. So do that and then maybe I'll just move it a little bit too. So now we've got one state where it's the light is slightly modified and then on the base state it is back to that kind of full glow. So we can kind of animate between those two. Give it a nice subtle glowing effect. So we'll add an event. On start we'll add a transition and we'll go from the current state to the new state. We're going to set the looping to infinite and the cycle to ping pong. Let's give that a try. Looks good. It's a little fast. I might slow it down a little bit just to make it really nice and subtle. Try 1.5 for the duration. That looks nice. And then we can also give it a, we group the Boolean and the stem, we make it all one group. We can give that a look at type. And I think this default distance is nice. So then that way, come into your frame, pumpkin is gonna look at your cursor. And there we go. That's how you do it.